Uh, my name is Tona Isong. Um, uh, I'm a university teacher in the University of Ibadan. I've uh, been a professor and a vice chancellor and then honorable minister of science and technology. And uh, the space program was launched during my tenure. So I was the minister uh, responsible for guiding the, all the management and activities leading to the launch of our satellites. So my involvement was that I was the minister, I was uh, interfacing between the president and the scientists and the international community and ensuring that our space program took off. Um, and in working with uh, partners in the UK and in China, what strategies were put in place to ensure that Nigerians were able to take forward these technologies and to adapt and improve them into the future? Yes. Well, from the world go, we ensured that Nigerians was involved in the design and in the uh, implementation of the uh, project. Uh, that meant, like in the SORE program, we, we, we sent 15 young scientists and engineers. And you'll be interested to know that we kept it an open competitive system. And when we advertised, we had over 5,000 applicants competing for 15 spaces. And we went through examinations, giving them tests, got um, aptitude tests, brought international uh, experts to help us to interview them. The summary of it was that we were able to get them and then send them to uh, Surrey. I visited them in Surrey. And uh, at the beginning, they were a little bit slow in mathematics and computer, but within six months, they caught up. They became very active participants of the program and worked very, very well with our uh, international friends in Surrey, and we were able to get this together. And then finally, we launched the satellite in Russia in Dusesk uh, in exactly September 27, 2003. So it was win-win, and uh, we all worked very uh, well together. The young people worked well, the government worked well, the Surrey um, uh, the Technology Satellite Technology uh, Limited worked very well. The same thing with the um, uh, Chinese, with the communication satellite. In the case of China, we sent uh, 55 uh, young engineers and scientists who learned the Chinese language, learned the technology work. Here again, we followed it up, we visited them, and uh, they came back with a lot of technology. And as I'm speaking to you, we are able to say we have over 100 Nigerian uh, space scientists and engineers who are working in Nigeria, tracking a satellite. For instance, our remote sensing satellite has been in space for over six years, tracked and monitored by Nigerian scientists and engineers. That's really interesting. Um, can you uh, say, have there been any unexpected benefits or costs? that have emerged from investing in space science and technology very, in Nigeria? Very unexpected benefit. One main benefit is that you cannot count in terms of money. Nigeria was able to restore some of its self-confidence that our young people, just like you saw in the Microsoft Award, young scientists were able to handle very complex, high-tech um, uh, challenges. And I think that was restoring our self-confidence was a major uh, cost-benefit analysis. Secondly, uh, the, the, the remote sensing capacity, capability, is now helping Nigeria to monitor agriculture, um, disaster monitoring, um, droughts, you know, environmental challenges, urban development. And more importantly, with our communication satellites, we were able to get into information technology. We had some problems with it after 18 months. We're happy to say it's going to be replaced in the next um, uh, year and a half. So it will have been a positive development in terms of Nigeria in, because it has helped us to get into it. The spin-off of all this, just like you saw in Microsoft, Nigerians are in uh, software, uh, software development. Uh, and the capacity building in this area, uh, the satellite assembly, and hopefully we'll be able to get into launch of satellites. So these are all new possibilities, which we are close to us if we did not get into this technology. 
That's fascinating. So you mentioned some of the applications of the um, Nigerian satellites. I just had a, a question about um, whether there have been any complementary policies put in place to ensure that some of these benefits have been distributed equitably through Nigeria's population. Yes, it's very important. Um, the, the, the one on the remote sensor, uh, let me say, uh, that we were able to now work with the Nigerian universities and created a lot of research possibilities that were not there uh, with universities, you know, uh, forestry research, you know, uh, water conservation, you know, disaster monitoring, areas that Nigerian universities were not, were no-go areas, so it has opened up. With respect to the common people, I mentioned agriculture earlier, so it's an important area. With areas of population, you know, settlements, Nigerian satellites came very handy in, in, the, in monitoring uh, Nigerian settlements in the Nigerian population count. So these were very major grassroots uh, applications that Nigeria benefited from. Thank you. Um, and has, um, have there been any ways in which Nigeria has used this technology in novel ways based on local or domestic demands or needs which haven't been seen in applications in other countries? Yes. <laughs> I think that I've already mentioned uh, the one on remote sensing. Take Lake Chad. The Lake Chad, Lake Chad is a big lake, but you'll be surprised to hear that Lake Chad has been shrinking. The water level has been shrinking. Lake Chad area carries almost uh, 25, 30 million human beings. So our satellite is being used to study the dynamics of the Lake Chad in terms of population, water management, and you can agree that this is very specific to Nigerian circumstances, and we are able to do that. Again, uh, disaster monitoring. Uh, we are in a disaster monitoring constellation. The uh, young awardee from uh, Algeria mentioned that. You will be interested to know that our satellite in constellation, the Nigerian satellite, was one of the first satellites that took the most sensitive pictures of Katrina in the US. Okay, so here we are not just Nigeria, we are contributing. Even the tsunami in Southeast Asia, our satellite made a contribution in the uh, So uh, I'm just expanding the question. Not only did it serve Nigeria, we are contributing to global uh, solution of problems. Then our communication satellite, which was on for 18 months, opened up the possibility of the bandwidth use in Africa. Huge market that was uh, not available to Nigerians. And we crashed the price of bandwidth. That is doable and is demonstrable. So now we know that there's a market. It's not just speculation. There's a pilot, if you like. So even though we had a communication satellite, very advanced, even though we had some problems, we learned from the mistakes of that. We learned from that pilot scheme, and we are going to replace it, and Nigeria will be highly represented in the communication uh, satellite business. So there are very unique areas that we could come in. Then, of course, I've already told you the benefit of uh, capacity, uh, which was not available. And in my, uh, the paper that I wrote for Nature, I made a very important point that developing countries has to be in business, to be on the table to discuss with our international friends. If we don't have the capacity, we will not be invited to be present to look at the global problems that affect us. Otherwise, you will be telling us, we will help you. Beyond helping, we want to be able to be partners. And finally, I have the philosophy that you can be partners when your capacities are fairly close. If you are not close, then one becomes a passenger. All right. And Nigeria being in space means we could have now partnership with our international friends.